Hey guys, this is Mr. Crayfish, and welcome back to another modding tutorial. So in the last episode, we installed JDK, we installed Forge, and we also set up Eclipse. In this episode today, we're actually going to get um, onto a start of actually um, coding. So we're going to be setting up the base class for your mod, and this is where um, you actually define all your blocks, you load your blocks up, um, and initialize your whole entire mod in this one class. So you should have your Eclipse window open from last episode and what we're going to do now is we're just going to open up this Minecraft folder bit here and then we're also going to open up this first one here and then you should see we got this com.example.example mod in here. Now this is just an example that um, they provide every time you install uh, Forge or Forge modding or if when you set up the Forge uh, development environment. We're actually not going to need that so you can go ahead right click it, delete it, don't need it. Now you want to click on this first folder at the top here and we're going to create a package. Now a package is essentially um, a way to organize all your classes that you're going to be creating in your mod and we're going to go into it further on. Uh, you'll be able to see what it looks like further on in this tutorial but for now what we're going to do is click on that new package and the standard way to name a package is to use your website so mine's mrcrayfish.com so I would do com.mrcrayfish and then do another dot and then the name of the mod that I'm creating um, for this tutorial purposes I'm just going to write tutorial um, but yours could be I don't know TV mod or something I don't know could be anything like that but I'm just going to write tutorial uh, if you don't have a website uh, what you can do is just write like just write like your Minecraft username or something like that and then do dot um, your mod name but yeah I'm gonna do it properly so com dot mr crayfish dot tutorial is what I'm gonna call my package and then you'll see that we've got this empty package up here click on it and then you wanna press this C button here this creates a new Java class click on that and then you want to name this the name of your mod so mine's just gonna be tutorial mod now you can put whatever in there you want, but make sure it doesn't have any spaces or anything like that. Press finish. So once you've created your class, you should end up with a window like this. It should say package and then the package name that you just created then. And then it should say public class, the name of your mod, and then two squiggly brackets. Now we're actually going to define this class as a class for Forge to load up. And to do that, what you want to do is just create another space in between the package and the public class there and type at mod and then you want to type or you want to open the bracket just a normal curl oh, it's a parenthesis actually and then you want to type inside of it mod ID space equals space quotations and then um, you want to type in kind of a, an abbreviation of your mod name so my name my tutorial mod name is tutorial mod so I'm simply just going to type in TM for, tutor for tutorial mod I'm getting really tongue-tied here for some reason it's not confusing calm down so after those quotations do comma and then you want to type in name space equals space quotations and then the name of your mod uh, this can be anything and it can include spaces um, but yeah just name it the name of your mod say tutorial mod after those quotations another comma and then type version equals quotations and we type in 1.0 now just highlight over this mod part and import it. Now go ahead and press the save button up here. We can actually test to make sure that this is actually loading into the game. So go ahead, press the run button and this will actually start up the Minecraft client. And if you go into the mods tab well, mods list here, you see that at the bottom we got tutorial mod version 1.0 that we defined up here. The name of the mod at the top there which is there and then obviously all the, the mod ID is actually hidden. Now just close off the game and what we're going to do now is we're going to type in three important methods which are used in the loading of your mod um, and I'll explain what each one does during that. Now the first method is the pre-initialization method and this is where um, you initialize your items, your blocks, you register them and you can also uh, get info from your config file from here as well to change around settings in your mod from outside of Minecraft. 
So what we're going to do to actually type this is we're going to go at event handler, then go into the next line. We're going to type public void pre in it. Now this doesn't the name of this method doesn't matter. Um, it's just best to write it just pre in it, and then we're going to open brackets here and we're going to type fml pre initialization. Oh god, I hate this word. Event and then space event, and then put squiggly brackets on the end, and then go onto a new line. Now, highlight over these red lines and just import them like that. It should be the first option. I'm going to put a space in between there. It's just me. So again, this is going to be for block registering, and I'm just going to create a comment here. So item slash block init, init, init and registering. Init's just short for... Um, initialization and then also config handling in here as well so you can just write you can put in those comments if you want to um, just for reference later on now we're going to go on to the next method which is the normal initialization event so again we start off with event handler go into the new line type public void init and then inside of here we type fml now I'm not going to do pre-initialization event, I'm just going to do fl initialization event and then space event squiggly bracket at the end, open it up, bring it down a new line and then import that fml initialization event so I'm just going to quickly write this down, say so proxy um, tile, make proxy tile nt um, entity, just normal entity, GUI, and packet handling or registering event are going to go into here. So that's it for the initialization event. Um, now we're going to do the post initialization event, and you can probably guess what it's going to be like. So again, event handler, new line, public void post init. Then open brackets, fml post initialization event space event squiggly bracket, bring it down a new line and import it. Now the post initialization event is not used as much as the normal initialization event and the pre initialization event. An example that I can give right now is if I want to get a list of all the blocks that have been added to, into the game from other mods um, I would put it into here because this uh, pre-initialization event would have been called for every single mod that has been in the game and we stated here that all block initializations and registering um, would have been done uh, if you don't understand what pre in it in it and post in it means that means this comes first second then third so all registering would have been done now to go a little bit more further into detail what this will do is it will make sure it calls every pre-initialization event from every mod that has been added before it actually moves onto this one and then once all of them have been called it will call every single initialization event from all the mods that have been added and then once that's done it can go on to the post initialization event and that's where um, oh, you can get the list of the blocks from every mod because they've been registered up here and they've all been called and there we go guys that is the base kind of template for the main class in your mod uh, that's going to end up that's going to end off this episode today and in the next episode we're actually going to start adding some items and blocks in so make sure you look out for that uh, it's going to be a little bit longer tutorial, so I might actually split them up into two just to make it a lot easier for you guys to actually understand. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please remember to hit that like button. It really helps me out, keeps me motivated to do these videos, and also lets me know that you guys are enjoying this series. Um, if you have any ideas for tutorials, let me know in the comments because I will consider them for future ones. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye!